All right, we'll be talking about cloud native build packs. Um, and uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah, uh, so build packs uh, at a very high level are a way of turning your source code into container images without the need for a Docker file. Uh, and we'll be talking about how real companies like uh, Heroku, Salesforce, uh, Google, and VMware are using them to manage container images at the scale of like tens of millions. Uh, so real quick, my name's Joe Kuttner. Uh, I'm an architect at Salesforce working on internal platform. And with me is Terrence Lee, uh, who's an architect at Heroku. Uh, together we co-founded BuildPacks about six years ago, and uh, now it's an incubating CNCF project. So what are build packs? As I mentioned, they're a way of turning your, your source code into container images. And at the end of this, you get a container image that maps logically to your application components. So each of the layers will be you know, representing uh, source code or dependencies uh, or some component of your app. Uh, this is possible because uh, build packs are designed to be application aware. So once you create a build pack, you can share it across many applications and take advantage of all the, the logic <coughs> the logic that's contained in it. So developers use build packs because they're, they're more efficient, right? And I mean that in the sense that uh, they're actually uh, potentially more sustainable because they don't uh, repeat builds uh, unless it's absolutely necessary. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, just take over. Oh, you want me to take it away? Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, and so uh, some things we have is, uh, Joe was talking about uh, not repeating builds, so we actually, uh, you know, like a, you, you would have a build pack for Java, for Ruby, uh, and those build packs can decide when to reuse the cache, uh, when to, uh, you know, bust the cache, like if you're, for instance, adding a node module to your package JSON. Uh, you should be able to reuse an entire cache uh, even though like a file system thing has changed, right? Like none of the rest of the node modules are invalid. But if you're upgrading your version of node, the node ABI has changed, uh, you actually probably want to blow away your cache because you need to recompile your native extensions there. Yeah. So how many of you have made a change to your Docker file that was seemingly small, but then all of a sudden busted every one of your cache layers and realized you have like another few minutes or hours to rebuild? Right, like that, that's fine for a single app maybe, but it doesn't really scale to that tens of millions, right? Uh, so one of the mechanisms that uh, build packs have, uh, it were, it's great for tens of millions, but it's also good even if you just have 500 or 1,000 images. When you have uh, a vulnerability that affects like the base operating system and you have to update every one of these, uh, rolling that out across the fleet can be time consuming and, and, and waste resources. Uh, so this build pack rebase mechanism takes those top layers of your container images which map to your application uh, and because we know what's in those layers, we can do this sort of lift and shift onto a, the new base image. And the resulting uh, new container image is, is a, a real image but it, you don't have to recompile or reinstall dependencies unless it's absolutely necessary. Uh, and this is due to the uh, ABI compatibility guarantee of the, the base operating system. Uh, so now Terrence uh, will show us how we're, you can actually run build packs. Yeah, thanks Joe. Uh, so yeah, the easiest way to get started is through the Pax UI. If you actually go to the CNCF landscape and you click through onto our icon, we'll actually uh, show, uh, take you to the pack repo. Uh, we have these, you can use Brew uh, uh, on Linux and Mac. Uh, you can download directly from GitHub. And then we also have just, uh, you know, the binaries in a, various kind of Linux distro package managers as well. Um, and then you can just run a pack build, uh, name an image, and you're kind of good to go. Um, next slide. Uh, so, you know, the easiest way uh, with using pack is that there's actually a bunch of various kind of build pack providers that um, have built build packs. Uh, Heroku, uh, I work there, uh, makes a set of, you know, build packs over the kind of six language ecosystems that we support, uh, Ruby, Node, Java, um, PHP, Python, et cetera. Um, there's the Baketo project, which kind of came out of VMware um, as well. That's an open source project where uh, they have a bunch of build packs, um, you know, that a bunch of companies use as well. And then Google also has a set of build packs. Uh, and then you can just kind of specify the builders and it will automatically detect what language you're using and then you can kind of hit that ground running. 
Uh, in, in addition to that, so we were talking about PAC. PAC is actually just like a local CLI platform, and it's probably the easiest way to get started, like I was mentioning before. You can, you know, for a lot of companies that start using build packs, they just use it in their CI CD system directly um, as part of their CI um, pipeline. Uh, you can use it inside of Jenkins. Uh, we provide a GitHub Actions uh, as well as a Circle CI. Uh, and then, you know, we're at KubeCon. There's, as part of the project, there's KPAC, which is Kubernetes Operator. Uh, we have a Tecton template, uh, if that's your flavor. And then, uh, actually, as part of the Spring Boot project, you can just use Maven and get a running containerized image as part of that. And that's kind of all we had. Uh, we're going to be at the Project Pavilion in the afternoons if you want to come chat with us. Uh, we have a maintainer track, track talk tomorrow if you want to kind of dive deeper and kind of see how all this stuff works. And then you can, of course, uh, reach out to us online. Um, yeah. Thanks, everyone.